DJ Ferris. Chicago, nigga. It's the real one. He back. Only one is pulling shit. Fuck up. Let's get a sports talk. Ranks among the other rookies this season. First in points, first in assists, first in usage, and third in PER. He has, of course, led the Grizzlies to currently holding the eighth seed. So, Kendrick, what are your expectations for John Morant in Orlando here? My expectations are the same. Listen, John Morant has not let me down since he's been in college. And, Rachel, you remember on draft night? Yep. We were up there in, the, in New York, and I told you, I said, listen, I would not be mad at the New Orleans Pelicans draft John Morant number one. People was looking at me crazy. At the end of the day, listen, this kid is a generational talent. We know this, but he's relentless. He don't care. He got it out the mud. And he's a hell of a leader. And you know what? During this pandemic, he For him to be a young rookie, he you can tell he's a hell of a uh, leader. And that's what changed teams when you have a leader on your team at that point guard position. When you already could become a leader at, at your rookie year, look at a big outcome for them. They in the AC in his first year. Now it's up to them to finish it off. And it'll be a successful season for his rookie campaign to be able to become rookie of the year. Now he already in the lead for it, but they already had Zion right behind it. But if he finished this off, and get Memphis to the playoff, it's no brainer that he's the rookie of the year. Because he's a good leader. And he finished strong. He come in there with that attitude. And that's what helping Memphis be a good team this season. With him. And it was a good draft pick for Memphis. Because they organization is looking at a way to be successful. Not right away, but the way John Morant came into the NBA, he helped them be a playoff team right away. He put on 12 pounds of muscle, and he looks phenomenal. And I've been seeing clips of Memphis and, and how they've been practicing and, you know, how they've been, you know, going about things. He's very mature, and this kid is on a mission, and he's not going to let his foot off the gas no time soon. This dude is one of the most electrifying players in the NBA already. Listen, in his like second or third game or something, he blocked Kyrie Irving at the buzzer of regulation, flexed all over him, trash-talked everybody in sight. He announced himself right away, but what's most impressive about him is not even that. It's that most rookie point guards on rebuilding teams are not good. They don't help them te their teams win. The league just overwhelms them. This dude is good already. He's legitimately good. He's crafty. He thinks that because. Most of the point guards coming to the league just worrying about scoring. They not worrying about trying to do other things to help the team be successful right away or help this team head, head in the right direction. The difference with him, he already came in with that leadership already. And that's what you need from your point guard position. And he come in ready to go. He was already mature and already ready to lead this team to another level. Like, most point guards coming here, they don't lead their team to the playoff. Rebuild the teams, they got to wait two, three years before they start picking it up. But he already had Memphis already up here already on the line of making the playoffs already. Game a half step ahead of everybody else on the floor. He's a good cutter off the ball. He's a decent shooter. He's just flat out really, really good and so far ahead of the curve for rookie point guards. It's incredible. Rachel, just to piggyback off the guys, both made great points, but what I want to see is what Perk alluded to, is the 12 pounds. He's already one of the most athletic guys that we have on the floor to begin with. Now he's going to be able to kind of take that bump as he goes to the rim. How much more impactful can he be with that added weight because he's going to be stronger and have that ability to take the contact as he goes to the rim? The sky is absolutely the limit for this kid, and my expectation is he's not going to bow out of the eight seed that quickly, that's for sure.
Yeah, and look, we know that the off-season after a guy's rookie year is normally so consequential, right? They've learned how to work out. They've learned how to, you know, really make sure that they're getting the most out of their body. John Morant kind of already got that off-season after his rookie year in this shutdown. And now he's coming back for his rookie year playoffs, but it's almost like he has second-year knowledge and a second-year body. I'm so interested to see how that works. And, and, yeah, guys, I'm also interested because we won't have fans in the stands and you're going to hear the players more. I'm really interested in the John Morant trash talk. I am here for it, so we'll see if that happens. <laughs> George, you mentioned the race in the West. Take a look. Blazers, Pels, Spurs, Kings, Suns, all looking at Memphis. Zach, who is the better bet for the eighth spot? Would you say the Grizz or the Field? You still got to go to the Grizz. They're three and a half up. The Kings roster is a mash unit right now, although they have a pretty easy schedule. There's a little uncertainty about Zion, so I'm going to give it to the Grizzlies. I actually have faith in this team. Jaron Jackson's healthy. Brandon Clark's healthy. They get to integrate Justice Winslow. All they really have to do is go 3-5 and five, and maybe just 2-6 and six to get into the play-in and maybe even hold the 8th seed. So I think they're go I'm going Grizz over the field. Rachel, I, I, I don't know if I'm there with Zach just yet. As much as I say... I feel like Memphis is going to finish it off. At 32 and 33, everyone else like 29, 37, 29, 36. And they got the best bet to at least finish, what, three and five, four and five to make the playoffs. It's there for the taking. They, they don't let it slip through their hands because they already have it right here. It's just up to them to finish off. Now, these four months layoff, Got everyone healthy. That's why they wanted a little skid because they had players that was on the uh, injured reserve right now. And now when the four months went past, now everyone's healthy. Now they can pick up what they left off. That's the only thing that could have hurt them if they still had the players not on the floor. Like they, they had Clark who was injured. So and he was a and uh, just a so. Them, them big pieces that they need on the floor, and they got them back now fully healthy to help them push for this playoff run. They wouldn't relinquish that that easily. I still think that they're going to get in that play-in situation, and most likely it's going to be against a team like Portland, Portland, who's at full strength now all of a sudden. You got Zach Collins back. You got Yusuf Nurkic back. You still have a son, Whiteside. Dame and CJ are healthy. That, to me, is the one team that I can see that – at full strength, we'll be able to take that and grab that eight seed away from Memphis. Well, listen, if I'm Memphis, I'm taking these eight regular season games very seriously because I'm going to approach each one of them like they're a playoff game so I can get separation. But when I'm looking at the teams down the line, yes, it's hard to count out Dame Dowler and C.J. McCullough, one of the best backcourts in the league, but they are missing Trevor for a reason. But a team to keep a close eye on is the San Antonio Spurs. And here's why. I was looking at their roster last night, and without LaMarcus Aldridge, you could never underestimate the great Greg Popovich. They had the makeup of going small. And we all know down there in that bubble, it's going to be an AAU-type setting, and it's going to be like pickup. And they you can't cut them out. I, I, I don't, the Spurs not made the plot this year. Yes, I understand they've been made a playoff for like 20 years, but they not made a playoff this year. This is not a playoff team for Popovich. This is one of his teams that's going to miss the playoffs this year. Like they were a full, well, full half game back. That means they got to go on a, a nice run to try to get past Portland and potentially hold Memphis to lose some games to play uh, a play-in game. But I feel like they're too far behind to catch up. I feel like this is one of the teams that Papa Bitch have that's going to miss the playoff. They're going to move Rudy Gay to the five with, the, uh, with Deontay Murray and DeMar DeRozan. That means they're going to be getting up and down. And we all know that Patty Mills is capable of going for 40 points. We've seen that on plenty of occasions. But I will say Memphis is not going anywhere no time soon. I had the Pelicans. But the uncertainty of Zion and when he's going to come back and if he's going to be in game rhythm raise a concern for me. So I think that the Memphis Grizzlies are going to hold that AC down. And remember, guys, 
because they're three and a half games ahead of their. Yes, I, I, they gonna hold it down. I feel like people that's behind them have to go on, on a good winning streak to have potentially passing them up or potentially making this tool a play in. But I feel like they got too much to make up. It's up to Memphis put a good winning together. At least win the four games or five at least to succeed at that spot. And I feel like they're going to hold it. Closest rivals, they've got to escape full terminal velocity and get more than four games ahead to avoid a playing game. If we do have a play-in situation, the higher seed only has to win once. The lower seed would have to win twice to be the one to kick them out of the playoffs. We'll have to see if that develops. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live stream.